Turning now to Washington, D.C., where a suspect is in custody as authorities try to figure out what led the North Carolina man to make a bomb threat near the U.S. Capitol. He claimed to have explosives in his pickup truck outside the Library of Congress and demanded to speak with President Biden. This set off evacuations of nearby buildings and road closures. Police were able to get the suspect to surrender after a five-hour standoff. Jeff Pegues was near the scene yesterday. He joins me now from Capitol Hill. Jeff, uh, when we spoke yesterday, there were so many questions. Now a lot is in focus. So if you could give us a sense of what unfolded and the significance of the truck's location uh, and also how the standoff finally came to an end. Well, so much, uh, Laura, happened yesterday, as you know, as we watch this thing unfold. And, and some of it we watched because he was live streaming during this bomb scare. Uh, during which he was parked right on the sidewalk, uh, right outside the Library of Congress, which is right across from where I am uh, in this uh, Capitol building. And so uh, authorities are telling us that they're still looking into what motivated him to do this, but you know, what he chose was the seat of power. Uh, you have the Capitol Dome right across from the street where I am, you have all these uh, congressional office buildings, you have the Supreme Court. Uh, and so this is one of those areas that is chock full, if you will, with uh, landmarks. And that's what investigators have been concerned about really since January 6th, is that you have this chatter online where people want to target uh, this capital area and that's what we saw yesterday and that's in part why the situation was so tense. Now investigators were in contact with this man for several hours. This is something that went on for several hours and the good thing was that they were in communication with him. Uh, and then once they tried to get a cell phone to him around 2 p.m. that's when he all of a sudden decided to surrender. Uh, and so it came to a peaceful end. He is in custody, uh, but still the investigation continues. We're so glad that it came to a peaceful resolution. There was no detonation. Uh, a question for you regarding the suspect. Now that he's in custody, he's talking to investigators. What do we know about him? Well, he's a man from North Carolina, and while he had a relatively minor criminal record, he was not, we're told on law enforcement's radar. Uh, we talked to his ex-wife, who said that she believes that he is mentally unstable, but she also says she never expected him to do something like this. What we also know is what we saw in that rant uh, during that live stream, which was taken down. Uh, but what it showed was someone who had some grievances against the government. He talked about the situation in Afghanistan. He said he wanted to talk to President Biden, which of course wasn't going to happen. Uh, he also talked about uh, the Democrats and how they should leave Washington, things like that. So there, there was just this rambling rant. Uh, other than that, as I said, he wasn't on law enforcement's radar. He's not someone we've heard about before. But that type of situation just reminded a lot of people of the, the, the threat environment here facing this capital from people who have essentially ingested information online and a lot of it uh, factually inaccurate information. And they just sort of taken that information in, law enforcement knows it, and it really serves to stir up these grievances that people already have. And that's, what's law, that's what law enforcement is telling us. And, and that may be what they find here once they finish this investigation into what happened yesterday with this bomb scare. Yes, and what you were just saying, law enforcement is preparing itself for more of these sorts of situations. Just last Friday, the Department of Homeland Security released a bulletin warning of growing foreign and domestic terror threats. So how are officials working to address uh, these continued threats? Well, you know, Laura, they really have their hands full because when you look at what happened in Afghanistan now, you're going to have both uh, the CIA as well as the FBI turning their attention also to the international threats that will likely be stirred up, uh, perhaps. I, I know that's something that uh, they're concerned about with the situation in Afghanistan. And then on top of that, you have this still active threat from domestic terrorist groups that investigators have 
uh, really ramped up their investigations of because that is the immediate threat right now. Uh, and we're seeing it really every day across this country. And yesterday I talked to law enforcement sources who were responding to this incident and they said, you know what, we don't know what this is. And this was at the outset and I was trying to figure out what was going on. And so I reached out to my sources and I, you know, typically you have these bomb scares and they don't really turn into a big deal. And at that time, early on with this, when this thing started in the morning, Investigators said, you know, in this environment, we have to, you know, throw everything we have at every little incident because you just never know uh, what these things might bubble into. It's just a, a weird time right now. And that, that's almost word for, for word what, from what uh, this official told me. So they're really concerned. They are um, at this heightened level of awareness because they are uh, aware of the threats that's, that are out there. And then, of course, law enforcement uh, got a lot of criticism uh, about how they prepared and reacted to the January 6th insurrection. And so no one wants to see a repeat of that up here. And so they're doing whatever they can to throw as many resources that they have and then work as well with local law enforcement uh, to get ahead of some of these threats. Yeah, and I liked what you said yesterday when you were on scene there within just a few minutes, really, of learning of this bomb threat. And we quickly heard from the police chief, the Capitol Police chief, and you said, you know, it's, a, it's pretty astounding that he's this communicative to the public, to the press, while there's an ongoing bomb threat investigation. So clearly they're, they're bolstering the Capitol Police presence and they're also being more transparent. They are, and that is so important in situations like this, and that is really an approach that law enforcement uh, has warmed up to over the years because you really have to keep the public informed. Everybody's connected with all their cell phones. And so the, and, and, and by the way, you know, perhaps the most important factor in that is that you don't want rumors to start, false information to spread. So you really have to get out there ahead of the situation and get as much factual information out to the public as possible uh, so that everybody is informed. And now the Capitol uh, Hill Police Department has a really experienced law enforcement professional. He's worked uh, for other municipalities in the past, so he's got a long history. He's led a national law enforcement organization, so he is as experienced as they come. But it is, uh, you know, in, in most cases, unusual for law enforcement to come out and make statements uh, during an active bomb scare. But in that case, they were one step ahead of us because when I said that, I didn't know that there was this live stream. And so they were probably aware of the live stream. They knew what was going on. They were communicating with the man and they felt comfortable at that time going public and at least coming out with some information. Well, Jeff Begays, thank you so much for your reporting. My pleasure.